Biggie, man, um, is it true that he was broke before his death? What was his financial situation like before he got killed? I, I don't know his I don't know his bank account, but what he told me was that and this is how we got into the conversation, because he was asking me for Newport cigarettes while we was in the Winnebago. And then um I said, my man, you broke. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what the fuck? You asked me for cigarettes, man. What, you broke or something? You understand? But I knew he was waiting on both of his contracts. He said, I ain't broke. I ain't broke. Look at this. He had a contract for $62 million. 60 or $62 million from Atlantic or either Capitol Records. I don't know for sure. And that was for all the groups that he was finna start. So now, his mother calls him on the telephone and says, yo, the contractor said that he's not going to finish this work unless he gets $60,000. Now, I believe Big was out there working on Puff album because he needed the money. He was probably cash money broke, but he was getting these contracts that was gonna make him a millionaire and rich. So, when I'm hearing him on his mother, on the phone with his mother telling his mother, Ma, don't worry about it. Give me the, give me the uh, number, give me the number, I'm gonna have somebody handle it. Give me the number, Ma, I'm gonna have somebody handle it. Don't worry about it. As soon as he hung up the phone with his mother, I said, damn, cause see, Big always try to get at a nigga and stuff like that, so now it's my time to get at his ass. I was like, yo, damn, man. You owe everybody. He's like, yo, I owe everybody. I said, yeah, nigga, you owe Mike Gadget $30,000 because he put all those drop boxes in your trucks and shit like that, and you ain't paid him yet. Yo, that motherfucker was stuck on stupid. He was like, and then I think his eyes may have gotten straight at the time because he started looking at me. Yo, yo, how you know that? I was like, yo, niggas talk big. Niggas talk all the time, bro. Here, you want to borrow another cigarette? <laughs> he said, that's all right. When I sign these contracts, I'm going to shut niggas up. I'm going to shut niggas up when I sign these contracts. I said, yeah, you got to sign the contracts first, though, big. He said, yo, he said, 62 million, nigga. You know what I'm going to do with that? I said, yeah, that's a lot of money, man. You're going to be the man. He said, he said, he said, I would take you with me. But you love that nigga Puff too much. I was like, nigga, I'm going with the money. He said, nah, I don't think so. I said, yeah, all right, whatever. So that's how I knew that he might have been cash flow bro. Because he had to be out there doing Puff album to get some, to get that money. Because he was going to go to London because they was giving him 25 G's to go over there. And it was just for press. It wasn't for no performance or none of that. All he's going to do to meet the press over there. Puffy, man. Puffy, Will Smith, and Jada Pinkett. Uh, what was the incident that happened between the two of you? Matt Damien was giving Ben Affleck a little birthday celebration at um, the Four Seasons. So it was a Sunday. So me, Jen, and Puff went over there to... A little celebration. So I get in the joint and I see Will Smith's sister. She had just got married and her and her husband are sitting there with black and red Michael Jackson thriller jackets on. And they both had them on. I was like, oh my God. I said, I don't believe this shit. I was laughing like a motherfucker. They was they had matching thriller jackets on. Now she looking at me funny because when I was in Cali, she had tried to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I don't give a fuck how much money Will is making. I would never talk to her. It's not my speed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's it definitely not my speed. So they over. I'm over there, and I'm like on the other side of them while Puff 
Jennifer Lopez, Matt Damien, uh, Ben Affleck, Will Smith, and Jada Pickett. They all over there and they drinking, having fun and stuff like that. So about an hour or so, Puff come over to me. He said, yo, Gene, come go to the restroom with me. I said, all right, we, to, we walk to the restroom. And he, I said, we walk to the restroom. I said, yo, what's wrong, man? What's up, man? What's wrong with you? He said, yo, I think Will and Jada trying to pull Jennifer. I need you to come close to me, close over there by us, because if he keep on with this bullshit, I'm going to snuff his ass. <laughs> Nigga, we'll go beat the shit out of you. <laughs> and if it's one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to see what he got. <laughs> he said, Gene, I ain't playing, man. I said, because people don't understand. You know, he was saying game. And I was always like a big unk to this nigga until he started, you know, and, and, and people could say what they want to say, but I've seen our friends die. I've seen people get hurt. I've seen act rappers get killed, die, and everything like that. And our relationship ain't the same no more. I, I went from big uncle, so security, all that shit like that, to I don't fuck with you, you don't fuck with me. So now, I said, Will Smith gonna beat shit out to you, man. And you know I'm gonna you know I'm gonna see what I'm gonna see what he got first. And then he said, Yo, Gene, I ain't playing with you, man. Yo, I'm telling you, man, I'ma snuff that nigga and then you better be on him. I said, Yeah, I got him, man. <laughs> yeah, he thought that uh Jada and Will was trying to pull Jennifer, but she ends up with Ben Affleck. Y'all remember that day, right, at the Four Seasons? She had got with Chris after that, that nigga Chris, but that was only a facade, some bullshit. But uh, I remember that very well. That shit was funny to me.